could question you why it openly, but we, we like that. But it's not, I wouldn't say that it's questioning for the sake of questioning. I would say that there has to be responsibility in what they are asking. I think that's also something we try to build a balance in them. That when you are questioning, you have to be polite. You have to also understand the other person's point of view. So those things also we try to inculcate in each other. So the buildings are designed to be the time. It's all part of the work we have to do. So I hope to you. This is the junior most of the time. something good and if you, if you if it's worthwhile then we'll put it up so but everybody has an opportunity anybody who does something good has an opportunity to put it up it's not that only somebody is a whatever anchor or a gold medalist and all that and even for competitions we don't send our children for any competitions except sports if there's somebody is really ex exceptional we take them for state level national level uh, thing. So that's if somebody is really good but in, within the school we keep a level playing field we give everybody opportunities for
ICSC doesn't prescribe syllabus, only 10th syllabus, 9th and 10th and 11th and 12th is prescribed. Below that, actually they don't prescribe. So we can teach, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, space for us to teach as per what we feel is important and age appropriate. See, one of the things about the Indian education system is generally it is not age appropriate and the little bias towards too much of volume. So what happens is children tend to, tend to, there's a lot of pressure to complete the syllabus even on teachers. So it's very difficult even for a teacher if they want to teach you critical thinking, creative, uh, you know, creativity, how, how they don't have the space because there's too much pressure to complete syllabus. Here we keep opposite, we keep telling the teachers don't, you don't have to complete the whole syllabus. There is no syllabus firstly from, uh, from 4 to 8. So you teach, you, you plan on what are the important things for your grade which you need to teach. And then what we have is we have grade level, uh, sorry, cross grade, you know, uh, subject uh, teachers, they have a meeting. So for, for example, the maths teachers would, would meet and they would every year they would plan, okay, what is what is it that the ninth grade teacher, for example, wants a fifth class student or a sixth class student to know in maths. So they tell them, I just want these two concepts and these three concepts which I need till nine. You just focus on these. So like that we have different subject uh, teachers. So we can, we have that kind of uh, critical thinking is happening for the teachers themselves. You know, that's what we keep saying, until our teachers are thinking critically, until our teachers are questioning, we can't expect that to happen from students. So that's something which we keep trying to do. How do you go for the So, so it's, it's a gradual process. From So say from class 8 onwards, they start having their exams and tests. Uh, so they, they gradually get used to it. So they have almost three years to get used to the board exams. So from 8, we start getting them more used to standardized tests and things like that idea of a test and then you'll be given a mark, all that starts from so the they, they don't struggle with motivation when they don't, test. No, I don't find them struggling. They may not like paper, the, you know, test too much because obviously a board exam is never a very exciting thing. But that doesn't mean that they, they don't, they, 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 there's no, like they don't feel okay, this is something which I have to escape from. They do well, but they do, they do well, they do the exams well and after they go from here is the main thing, right? What they do, uh, do they get into good colleges and all? That's something which we put up on our website now because we have enough examples of children doing well. Not only in India, some of the children have got high-level scholarships and gone abroad. Okay. Despite not getting their 90s. And even in Indian universities now, we are finding increasingly people are realizing that it's not only the 90 percenters who will do well in your institute, who will do something. Many of the institutes, I have been told this by inside story about some colleges, where they told, tell their people who interview, you know, who recruit, when they recruit the students, please look at 75, 80 percent student, percenters, don't have to look at only 90. The main thing they look at is what else did you do in the school? What did you demonstrate apart from your marks? Did you, did you participate in drama? Did you participate in sport? Because then they find those are the children who have the skills to, to actually do work. So I think increasingly in India, I, I, I'm quite optimistic that this is coming in slowly. The younger children, do they settle in well? Because they're really small in class. Well, actually, surprisingly for us, it takes about two to three weeks only for the children to settle down. One of the reasons is, as, as I said, our strength. They're only 120 children. Other thing is there is this community feeling in our school. You'll find many times the fourth and fifth graders, they get along very well with 10th grader or 11th grader. So there is this kind of a culture which has developed now where the older children tend to look after the younger children. Teachers are always available. But there is this feeling, so they, I think they feel at home very soon. And one more thing is here because the teachers are, I, I hope they are friendly and that the pressure is not there. So they kind of actually, they enjoy the space. In, initially, first two, three weeks, we find that children are running around. There's a lot of activity because they never found a school which gives them that much space. Then afterwards, gradually, we try to get them to a kind of, a, at least they need to know the limits. Every every space needs to have, with, with, needs to be dealt with responsibly. Gradually we get them used to that. Then they get, they, they like that. I mean, there is a particular, every child also wants to know what his limits are. Every child likes that. But the limit should not be too narrow, where they don't have the space to question, to grow, to, to, to express themselves. That's the balancing factor that we have to learn. Responsible freedom. Okay. And your senior students, have they sort of grown up here? Uh, or yes, of course. Or no, in the sense that you have an intake in class 9, at that level you find this. We do. We do have. In 9th also we take, 11th also we take students. For instance, where children have gone back after joining some in between. It does happen uh, with a few students. I think I would say in this 11 years, we've had around three or four students who could not, for whom they could not cope. Most of the times there was either some issue at home where they felt that the parents were sending them away or they were too attached to the parents. They were not ready. They were not psychologically ready.
But if any child is like that, we ourselves recommend to parents that they should take them back. Because one thing is, we don't want any child to be here by force. It's yeah. completely, like, you know, they should be... But naturally, it's difficult for them, right? All away. Initially, <coughs> only 2-3 weeks. After 2-3 weeks, you'll be surprised. If, you, if any of you come during the term time, you'll see that the 4th and 5th are the happiest children over here. I'm not <laughs> exaggerating, you can come and see it yourself. Because they, they have such a wonderful time. As I said, there's so many activities. They are the, the keenest uh, farmers in our school are the fourth and fifth people. They love every <laughs> evening you'll find them watering and they're doing organic farming. Then they'll go to the kitchen, they'll cook something. So there's, there's much more space at that age. So they actually, I find that they are the happiest. In fact, I keep telling parents, if you really want a childhood for your child, send them here in fourth and fifth. Not because I'm here. I genuinely feel that this is a good space. And most parents, in fact, they, they say this to me. Oh, I wish we had, I wish we had, we were in a school. In fact, even I feel that sometimes. <laughs> Not here in the beginning when I started teaching. So this tree, this is the people tree. One of the people tree. But this was the tree uh, on which our school was named later on. The people tree. And there are some, you'll find this is also people tree. There are lots of people trees around the place. So that's how we, this, you know, when we started, we were wondering what, what should we call the school. And then so came up with this thing that's called it people grow. And of course, as all of you know, people tree is the tree of wisdom. And we have this, this is the first outside class that we have over here. In fact, this is a very nice place that we, from the beginning we've been having all our discussions over here. In the beginning when we started, you know, we had discussions with our first lot of students. What should we call teachers, for example? That was, I remember, the first discussion that we had. So they, then they decided, no, they're going to call us Akka for the ladies and Bahia for the uh, men. So th you know, discussions like that. What what should be the what should be the code? What what kind of clothes should be allowed? We don't have a uniform system, but then there has to be a code. People have to. So those kind of discussions have happened over here. So for us, this is an important space. And then we later on we build these classrooms, outdoor classrooms. You can see that one over there. There's one over there, like that, there are four or five outdoor spaces for, for children. Because no point being in such a beautiful place and always eight hours being inside a classroom, you know. Yes. We'll be having to This is our art block over here. Right now it's closed, but uh, that's a very important skill for us. Art is compulsory for all children. It's part of our part of our syllabus. We, our art is part of our syllabus. It's not an additional thing. And every student, whether in class four or class twelve, has to do art. But what we tell children is, art is not one thing. It's like saying sports is sports. You can have tennis. You could have cricket. You could have football. Similarly, in art, you can do painting. You can do uh, culture, you could, uh, no, singing is a different thing. So within art, I'm talking about the fine art. Like there's so much which they can do. They can do carpentry, they can do clay modeling, so many things. So we encourage children, at least one thing you can enjoy. Are so there any folk art, Indian folk art? Yes, they do. They do Warli, for example, from Maharashtra and things like that. Yes. They, they, they. I was just wondering how is the emphasis on Indian traditional values and culture inculcated? Okay, that's a good question. That's a good question. Yes. Now, uh, oh, we... Question? Yeah, you can continue repeating. Yes, how the Indian, Indian uh, traditional values and culture... How do we inculcate uh, the traditional values over here? So, the first thing is that I think we, we don't try to inculcate, uh, you know, much. The approach is not inculcating a particular value. The approach is to dialogue and to question. So, even if there are Indian values, there are certain Indian values which or traditions which are probably our strengths and there are certain Indian values which are not so I think our students can, uh, should be open to learning from different sources but yes the importance of uh, they should not take our culture lightly that's something I think that we are clear about that I think comes from Sri and that our culture is very very important and it should not we should not feel inferior to other cultures that is important but yeah engaging with our culture they see teachers doing certain things we, we, we celebrate festivals, we celebrate all the Indian festivals, they are here, as I said, the eight months of the year they are here, we don't give them any holidays, so whether that's Holi, Dashera, etc., we celebrate it with them. But more important than that, there is the, the, the dialogue between the teacher and the student. That's where they learn the values. If the teachers, see, we may come from a particular value, but are, are we actually implementing that value? If you're not implementing it as a teacher, you really don't have a right to even speak about it to a student, actually. So if they see something unusual in a teacher, 
then often the student, because it's uh, informal uh, to some extent, they will come and ask you, why, why did you do like this? Why, why, why are you wearing... Sometimes students come and ask me, why do you wear pajama kurta? Why do you do that? So, I, I, you know, if I feel that in a certain way, I would, I would tell them, look, I do. But I don't always wear that. I mean, because I'm wearing it today, I don't, don't think every day I wear that. But <laughs> what I mean yeah. is in more practical ways, like classical in music or... Yeah. I mean, there is Western yes, and that Asian, is true. Right? So we we, we have we have Bharatanatyam dance as far as dance is concerned, Carnatic music and also Hindustani music. Those things they are exposed the to, but it's optional. Kalari Pai to is a uh, martial arts. But again, these are all optional. It's not compulsory. And there's also exposure to Western. We don't right now. We don't have Western. Uh, we don't have teachers who teach Western dance. We don't have. Uh, since it's a residential school, uh, are the students allowed to just do? I mean, there are activities during the school hours, but you know, if, if most question. other children go home and they, you know, they can do something else. Yes. I mean, they should be allowed to. How do you? So you see, they have a two-hour break in the middle in between their classes. Yeah. In the lunch, after lunch, they have two uh, uh, one and a half hour break. Actually. At that time, they can they can do whatever they like. They are not asked to do homework, etc. They can read or they can write or they can play music or whatever, they're in their dorms and they're allowed to do that. Then again, after games, we have an hour of games compulsory in the evening. After that, again, they have one and a half. Just that's completely free, they can do whatever they want. So they, that space is very important. Very I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Thank you, guys. Sundays they can come here, 
free time they can come here. Holidays they can do research. In fact, the holidays we try to give them projects, especially older children, where they can tell you they are doing some very they interesting things. They don't feel policed. You have to ask them that <laughs> whether they feel. No, I mean if they if this is a but you can see it's we have to we have to we have to I mean we have to see the balance. No, but if you block yeah. certain things, then then they are they still they get through. That's the fact. You see, we, 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 in the beginning, we, see, we always, our approach is always to leave it open. Yeah. But when things don't go, then we start to narrow it down because you don't want somebody to misuse something. We found that we tried everything, but we found that the only way is that the teacher has to be with the students. How many teachers are you? We have 35, 35 teachers and 120 students. So, the biggest answer for us is the teacher student ratio. Sorry. Great ratio. <laughs> Okay, then uh, I, I can show you the library, uh, then I'll... 10,000 or so. But the most important thing is we keep our uh, grading every month. Uh, this, for us the library, I would say, is one of the most important resources. So we spend very liberally on the library compared to anything else. Because we, and research also shows that children who, uh, whose parents, this is an interesting research which Harvard had done, which kind of reinforces what we believe in, that Children whose parents read books, they have a high, higher IQ than children whose parents don't. Which basically means that because children who grow up in homes where parents read books, they tend to read books. So that's how it happens. So reading books definitely can increase your IQ, but it's not only IQ. Reading books actually improves your imagination because when you're reading a book as opposed to watching a movie, reading a book you have to imagine the situation. When you're watching a movie, the movie is already doing it, so you're not imagining. So that's why reading is more important than and watching movies yeah. and uh, it improves your vocabulary, it improves your imagination, IQ, it's just wonderful. Once children get into the habit of reading, that's the best thing that you can do for a, for a child. We have, we have, we have all, all, all the drums yeah. and we have programs for, for children to read. Like we have actually, we have a space on Thursday mornings for one hour, the whole school including teachers read. That's it. There's no talk in anywhere in the whole campus. You just find everybody is reading. That also. And is it accessible any time? Not any time. Okay. During school hours, it's accessible. But we have library periods, and children can come oh, and read. The they can no. But they can borrow. They books. can take the book. Right? They yeah. can borrow books and they take. So definitely, library is for us the most sacred yeah. space in the school. to allow them to come up to the you know again experimentation coming up with something new that has to be the, the approach I mean apart from you can see the infrastructure is all there but what happens is how you engage with them how do you how, how much exploration is allowed in the lab how much time is spent in the lab there are many schools in India where the labs are there but they are never used so this is an area which we are con con continuously working with our science teachers to ensure that more time is spent on the lab less time in the classroom as far as science is concerned and exploring allowing